Step 1. Site layout. The tank location is selected by the householder. The layout is shown here in pink, with a perpendicular road crossing, the boundary kit just inside the boundary fence, and the service pipe alignment avoiding buildings. The tank location avoids tree roots and is adjacent to the existing household drain for ease of connection. The power supply to the pump is sketched on the rear of the existing power supply enclosure for future reference. Step 2. Service pipe installation. The drill rig is set in the public road reserve in the direction of the required drill. This drill rig is suitable for 40mm or 50mm diameter polyethylene pipe up to 50 meters of length. In this case, the service connection is 50 millimetres, as the overall length exceeds 30 metres. Service location and depth is confirmed to avoid service conflict. The drill rods are located en route with instructions being continuously fed back to the driller to achieve the required depth and direction. In this case, the long length of the drilling rod exceeds the 50 metres maximum drilling shot, so an intermediate small reception pit is excavated for connecting the two separate drill shots. The service pipe is connected to the drilling rod with marker wire attached and pulled into position. The marker wire facilitates future location of the polyethylene service connection pipe. Step 3. Boundary Kit Connection Where included, the boundary kit is installed approximately 500mm inside the property boundary. The boundary kit is a one-piece proprietary fitting consisting of a check valve, isolation valve and access point. A 500mm square concrete paving slab is installed below the service pipe. The service pipe is cut to suit and the boundary kit installed with standard compression fittings. Ensure that the orientation matches the flow direction symbol on the boundary kit. The boundary box is placed over the boundary kit for ease of future access. In this case, since the service pipe is 50mm, the connection requires reducers to connect to the standard 40mm boundary kit. Make sure that the valve on the boundary kit is closed until commissioning stage. Step 4. Mains Connection The pressure sewer main in the public road reserve is exposed. In this case, the main is 125mm diameter, so the connection method is a live tapping with a tapping band. If the main was a 50mm, 63mm or 90mm diameter, the connection method would require pinching the main either side of the connection to isolate cutting the main and inserting a T with compression connections. In this case, the valve on the tapping band can be opened and excavation backfilled as the boundary kit valve provides isolation of the tank prior to commissioning. Step 5. Tank Preparation The tank weighs 69 kilograms and can be carried into position by two people. The tank includes a 40mm threaded service connection point and three options for 100mm household drain connection. Connection adapters come with the tank. In this case, a 40mm to 50mm adapter is added to accommodate the 50mm service connection. The 100mm PVC sewer drain pipe from the property is connected to the tank via an inspection shaft consisting of a 450mm horizontal pipe, 90 degree bend, T and vertical pipe, thereby allowing household drain connection at any level on the vertical pipe. The cap of the selected tank drain inlet is sawn off and the inspection shaft is assembled and fitted to the tank via a gasket with stainless steel bands prior to tank installation. Ensure that the internal diameter of the drain inlet is at least 104mm in diameter prior to sawing off the cap. Step 6. Excavation for tank, drainage and ducting. The excavator is tracked with retractable tracks for ease of access to properties with minimal impact. The excavator can navigate gateways in excess of 900mm wide, which covers most installations. We expect to hand dig approximately 10% of sites due to access constraints. Subject to suitable ground conditions, the tank sits on virgin ground with excavation 150mm wider than tank diameter, including space for the inspection shaft. The standard tank is 1.6 metres deep and 1 metre in diameter. The trench for the household drain connection and the two 25mm electrical conduits from the one box controller to the tank are excavated prior to tank installation. Conduits are generally installed to a minimum of 500mm deep and the household drain must have an even gradient of 1 in 60. Step 7. Tank Installation 
The tank is lifted by the excavator with straps and lowered into the excavation. If access for excavator is not available, the tank can be lowered in by hand, noting that the tank weight is 69 kilos. When in place, material from the wall of the excavation is introduced to bed in the tank and the level is checked to achieve an even finish. The tank is filled with water to just below the household drain inlet level, which stabilizes the tank. This water will also be used for commissioning of the system. 20 by 20 kilogram bags of quickset cement are added around the tank as ballast, which is then wetted with a hose. This ballast quantity assumes a high water table. The service connects via compression fitting and two 90 degree bends for ease of installation. Two 32 mm holes are drilled in the tank where conduits will be inserted. The drilled holes should be at the same level 300 mm below the burial depth mark on the tank and 50 mm apart. 25 mm uniseal grommets are fitted to the holes. The two 25 mm electrical conduits are installed through the uniseal grommets to protrude approximately 25 mm into the tank. Step 8. Power supply to one box location. The one box controller requires a 20 amp circuit. If there is not sufficient space for the new 20 amp circuit breaker, there may be an option to replace an existing wide circuit breaker with two narrow circuit breakers. In some cases, due to space constraints, it may be necessary to add an external extension to the switchboard. Step 9. One box installation. The cable exit location should reference the preferred height of the one box controller. In this case, the height off the ground is a minimum of 600 mm, which is a common location. The wall plate is secured with the screws provided. The one box slides over the wall plate and is secured in place by tightening the screws and closing the red rubber seal. Step 10. Pump, level sensor and float installation. The power supply to the pump is located in a single 25mm conduit. Both the level sensor cable and the float switch cable share a 25mm conduit. The cables are laid out flat to avoid tangles so that individual cables can be easily removed in future if required. The cables come in standard 15m lengths which in practice means a maximum distance of approximately 13m between the one box and the tank. If needed, a special 30m cable length can be ordered. Where a long distance between tank and building exists, it is common to locate the one box on a post adjacent to the tank. The level transducer is measured to exact length for securing the cable hanger. This ensures the underside of the level sensor hangs exactly 100 mm above the base of the tank. The cable guide is carefully inserted to the conduits and cables are pulled through to avoid tangles. Seal the conduit in the tank with silicon to prevent odors traveling up the conduit. Conduits are installed at a minimum depth of 500 mm, avoiding sharp bends to ensure cables can be easily installed and removed when required. At the one box location, the conduits terminate just before the connection to the one box controller to avoid the risk of tank ventilation. The float and level sensor are placed carefully to one side and the pump is lowered into the tank using the mini excavator and straps or by hand noting that the pump weight is 40 kilograms. The pump sits on the base of the tank and is self-supporting. Plug the pump into the power cable and connect the riser to the tank outlet. The float excess cable is looped and secured to hang at 650 mm from the base supported by the hanger. The level sensor is slowly lowered into the tank with the hanger supported on a hook. Step 11. One box connections. The cable connections to the one box controller consists of the power supply from the household switchboard, the power supply to the pump, the level sensor cable and the float switch cable. A 32mm hole is drilled in the base in locations provided to accommodate the cable gland. The cables enter the underside of the one box controller via watertight cable glands. In this case, a single 32mm cable gland is utilized, requiring the addition of silicon sealant to complete the seal. Check the battery is disconnected and the isolator and breaker are in the off position before connecting the power cable. The power supply cable is fed through the cable gland and connected to the one box. A wiring instruction is included inside the door of the one box. The level sensor, float switch and pump cables are fed through the cable gland and a shroud is fitted to protect the cables and conduit. Check that the battery cable is disconnected, the isolator and breaker are in the off position and the test switch is set to normal. The cables are prepped for connection and connected in accordance with the wiring diagram on the back of the one box cover. 
the dip switch is set to the appropriate level sensor type as per wiring diagram instruction. Step 12. System commissioning. Ensure the pump is connected, boundary valve open and the level sensor carefully removed from the tank and placed to one side. Connect the battery cable. Press and hold the mute button and while holding, turn on the isolator and breaker switches. Ensure the mute button is depressed as this prevents alarm lockout during commissioning. Connect the tablet via USB and select the IOTA tab. The tablet will display the current data from the one box. The tablet screen shows 12 information boxes representing current one box data. The incoming volts should register around 240 volts and the level should be close to zero millimeters. Note the voltage for records. The network connection and SCADA connection should turn green, indicating successful connection. This may take a few minutes. Turn the test switch from normal to test. This provides power directly to the pump. Note the current draw in amps. This confirms the pump is working correctly and drawing expected amps. Turn the test switch back to normal. Note that the pump running indication on the tablet will not register in test mode. Lower the level sensor slowly into the water. When the level reaches the cut-in level, the pump will start running. The app will show the pump running in green and the level reading dropping. Slowly lift out the level sensor. This will register cut-out level and the pump will cut out. This confirms one box logic is working. Lift and tilt the float switch, placing it carefully on the ground. You should feel the mechanism inside the float move. This triggers a high level alarm and runs the pump. Confirm alarm and pump run is showing on the tablet. Return the float to the tank and this should deactivate the alarm and the pump will run for an additional two minutes. Note the levels steadily drop on the tablet. This confirms the float is operational and one box logic is working. Commissioning is now complete. Remove the USB cable and close and lock the one box. Place the lid on the tank and secure it with the three bolts provided. The one box reference number, site address and commissioning records should be provided to the client to update site details on the control system.